How did white South Africans get so wealthy? South Africa is the most unequal society in the world. And it freaks me out how many South Africans complain about BEE or they say 30 years of democracy, isn't that enough for you? In exactly that accent. And how little most South Africans know about economic apartheid, how far colonial and apartheid governments went to lift up white people and suppress people of color for hundreds of years. The simple truth is black economic empowerment is nothing compared to white economic empowerment. Your parents may have worked hard, very hard, but the paler their skin, the more they benefited from extraordinary government economic aid. And here's when old people say, oh no, but what about this black person who's wealthy or this black person who's made a lot of money? But here's the thing, right? Bad systems always hide behind miracle cases, the radical exceptions that make it out of a bad system even though it doesn't support them at all. They try to make it look like the exception, the miracle, is the average person in the system. And everybody who doesn't make it, well, that's their fault. It's not the system's fault. So here's the issue with white economic empowerment, how white people benefited from extraordinary government economic intervention. You know that speaking about apartheid is hard. So much of it happened off the record, people dispute it. So I'm gonna make this super simple. All I'm gonna do is tell you about a handful of apartheid policies that were enacted on the record, no doubt about it, that advantage white people and oppressed black people. So let's start in 1910, when the Union of South Africa was formed. Literally, the country was invented for the first time and government policies affected everybody in the country. The Second South African War had just ended. It was between the Brits and the Boers and the Brits won, but they wanted to unite all white people together, especially Afrikaners, because they'd been fighting each other and killing each other for years. And so immediately they made it that no people of color could vote. Instantly, unite the white people, only they can vote, only they can control the making of the new country. Then in 1913, the Land Act made it illegal, impossible for black people to own land outside of reserves. That meant 93% of all land in South Africa was only available to white people. Then in the early 1920s, poor white Afrikaners protested that most of big industry was dominated by British companies, and those companies were hiring skilled black workers over them. In response, the government funded enormous public works programs, like building the Hard to Bears Poor Dam, and they only hired poor white workers. They literally made programs to make jobs for poor white, particularly Afrikaner workers. Also in 1925, the Wage Act made a minimum wage for white workers, but not black workers. And the government offered incentives to companies applying for tenders. The more white workers you employ, the more likely you are to win work. Let's jump to 1948, when the National Party returns to power and formalizes apartheid for the very first time. And the first thing they do is direct massive funding to social programs and welfare grants for poor white people and slashed funding for people of color across the board. In 1950, the Group Areas Act stopped black people from moving through South Africa freely. They had to get permission to go places, always on white people's terms. And this made it incredibly hard to find work. In the 1950s and 60s, the apartheid government fixed black people's pensions, which meant that as inflation increased, the value of those pensions got less. At the same time, white people's pensions increased dramatically. Black South Africans were forced into the Bantu Education Act in 1953, where they were literally only taught how to do basic unskilled labor. They were reduced to servitude. The Nats worked incredibly hard to promote white, specifically Afrikaner owned business. You know why the Nats had African language radio stations through the SABC? To make money for white people off of black people. In the 60s, the apartheid government handed out millions of radios and ran the African language stations themselves. Obviously, they used it for propaganda to try and control the flow of information around apartheid, but they also gave ad space, reaching this massive new audience to white, especially Afrikaner-owned businesses at knockdown rates. And some of the biggest companies in South Africa today started that way, Afrikaner-owned benefiting from ad space on African language radio stations that the apartheid government handed them. I could go on, you get the point. And you know what I said earlier about the average experience showing what the system actually does? Well, let's look at what the apartheid system did to South Africa. In 1996, the first ever truly national census was taken where all South Africans were asked what the reality of their lives were like. Because of apartheid, the 1996 census found that 21% of black South Africans lived in informal housing. That's over 6 million people. And you know how many white South Africans lived in informal housing in 1996? 0.1%. More than 7 million black South Africans in 1996 had no access to piped water. 
97% of white South Africans had access to piped water. Let's talk about refuse removal. 59% of black South Africans had no access to regular refuse removal in 1996, more than 18 million people. 92% of white South Africans had access. Electricity. 56% of black South Africans had no access to electricity in 1996 at all, more than 17 million people. 99.6% of all white South Africans had good access to electricity. That is the reality that economic apartheid created in this country. A few weeks ago, there was a news headline. It said, South Africa not ready for a white president. And you know how sometimes you see a news headline and you think, what a waste. Like, why did you waste the ink and paper on that? Obviously, South Africa is not ready for a white president, although it does make sense when you see who said that quote. It was the leader of the Freedom Front Plus. Sorry, die Freiheitsfront Plus. This quote actually annoys me so much because it feels like it's implying that South Africans who aren't ready for a white president are somehow being unreasonable or should change or should think again. I mean, seriously, after centuries of abuse and oppression based on race by white people, and now what? They want trust. They want forgive and forget. That show got cancelled. Trust is earned. And I would say it's pretty damn reasonable to wait a little while longer to see if that trust is deserved. So... That's the issue with white economic empowerment. Thank you so much for watching this episode of The Issue with Dan Corder. We release one episode every single week on YouTube, and we also have a podcast, which you can find on all the streaming platforms, and you can find our socials in the video bio. Please like, subscribe, spread the word. See you soon.